It's great to have you join us on the show, Law and You, as we look at today's edition, which is on the medical tourism bill prescribing sanctions for offenders. And this actually has been uh, brought to address the gaps of the National Health Act 2014. And uh, looking at this, I have uh, distinguished uh, custodians of the law. And uh, starting from my immediate left, I have uh, a legal practitioner, A.B. Thomas. Thanks for joining me, A.B. Thomas. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Yes, at all. And next to him is another legal practitioner, and he is Malam Nuruddin Asunogye. Thanks for joining me, Malam Nuruddin. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon, viewers. Like I said earlier, this bill is to address the gaps on the National Health Act 2014, and uh, sometimes we ask ourselves the questions about what is the point having an act and then without having sanctions uh, for uh, violating such acts. And basically, it is for the purpose of ensuring that the money is being uh, taken overseas uh, in the disguise of medical trips uh, for one medical trip or another uh, it can be uh, retained in the country in order to boost the health sector and this was initiated uh, by the honorable member of the federal uh, constituency federal house of representatives and talking about uh, the person of sergios oguns who represents the eastern north East Southeast Federal Constituency, and uh, he did say that uh, there should be sanctions uh, for such offenses that would attract a fine of 500 million naira or uh, and a seven year jail term or both. And looking at this, uh, I would want to start with you, uh, A.B. Thomas. Uh, what do you make of this bill if passed into law? Uh, what do you see as the implication on the act? Hmm, thank you. You've used one very important word if passed with the kind of society we have that has produced those in the national assembly whose main functions are to legislate for the good of the people ordinarily such an idea to legislate make a bill to ban medical tourism mm. should be applauded ordinarily if it will see the light of day. But I can assure you whether this very set of politicians, the previous ones, or the next set you are going to have in this country, I don't see them passing a bill to regulate or ban medical tourism. It will never see light of day. I must also remind you that the South Southern member of House of Reps who initially seconded that bill has since recanted. He has since withdrawn his support. And what was his reason for saying he was no longer supporting the bill on medical tourism? He said it will affect members of the National Assembly. As if he was sent to the National Assembly to represent members of the National Assembly or his constituency. So, in other times, a bill like this should not have difficulty in selling through because it will have a multiplier effect. If passed, because I keep on using the word if, based on your question, if, multiplier effects. It means everybody will come, go to Nigerian hospitals, raise the standards to the standard abroad. The ones we go for medical tourism, those hospitals we go to abroad. They were, those hospitals standards were made what they are by the people who live in those countries. So if our own politicians are able to make a bill that will be signed into law by a president who himself campaigned that there will be no medical tourism once he's voted into power. Three months after he was voted into power, he started the medical tourism. London became his second home. So you can imagine that situation that we have had 
an electoral amendment bill that the, God, the president will refuse to sign and return it back? Is it the one that will now touch medical heads that he is always traveling abroad for? That he will sign? That is if, again, okay. the National Assembly are able to deliberate and pass the third regime. Okay, uh, let's look at it critically. Uh, it, it reads, the section to which amendment is sought without prejudice to the right of any Nigerian to seek medical checkup, investigation, or treatment anywhere within and outside Nigeria. No public officer of the government of the Federation or any part thereof shall be sponsored for medical checkup, investigation, or treatment abroad at public expense except in exceptional cases on the recommendation and referral by the medical board and which recommendation and referral shall be duly approved by the minister of Commi or commissioner of health of the state as the case may be this clause shows an exception should it be well uh, i want to align myself with what my senior colleague had said that except you are loaning, only then you probably will get pisillated with exhilaration that this uh, sanction is being introduced. When you look at the exception you have just read, mm. it's open to abuse. Mm. It is open to abuse. That in itself operates to emasculate the very sanction you say should be put in place. Mm. What the National Heart, uh, National Head Act had intended to achieve was to deepen the effic efficiency, efficacy of the health system in the country. Mm. It was to achieve this that you had the issue of medical tourism coming as very insignificant aspect of it that when we deepen the funding, do not forget, you get to the UK, you get to the United States of America, the majority of the doctors that our people see over there are Nigerians, who did not find the environment here conducive enough for them to practice, because there were no facilities, there were no incentives, there were no you know, no encouragement, so to speak. And mm. so those fellows in droves, they left this country. They are the same set of persons we go to meet there. It was to checkmate all of this that you said, oh, we will provide more funding. That has not happened. Our health cent uh, uh, the health sector is still very poorly funded. And so when you say there is going to be a referral and must be endorsed by the minister or the commissioner for health, yeah. If I'm in the good books of these persons, how do you not say I will operate in fraction of the law and become a victim of the so-called proposed sanction? Because so it's already a failed if, attempt. If the commissioner is in love with me, the very way in which it was couched, with due respect to whoever the sponsor is, it's just a question of let this be added to the bills that I have brought to the house. It is not intended to achieve even what the sponsor wants us to anticipate as the ultimate end because that in itself weakens how does the minister of ed determine that i'm the one to go and another person should not go these are serious issues what ought to be done what needed to be strengthened what did the, the National Assembly or the legislators should have been interested in is that how come the health sector is still so poorly funded for which in droves people are still out of this country in search of medical attention. How come Mr. President, for example, does not trust our medical facilities to the point that he must be in the United Kingdom? These are the critical issues because sanction become punitive, become impish when you have not created the environment that will sufficiently convince people why they would not have acted in infraction of the law. Create an enabling environment because the poorest of people today in this country only 
access our earth facilities here because they do not have. If they have a choice, they can fund it or they can get anybody who assists them in the funding of this. They go out. Mm. Okay. Now, let's look at the whole issue because uh, we uh, see the possibility of maybe excusing some uh, public office holders from this uh, bracket of uh, public servants. You know, uh, do you see the office of the president or the office of the governor uh, should be exempted? A.B. Thomas. <laughs> the office of the governor and that of the president has got enough exceptions. Hmm. You cannot prosecute a sitting president. Section 308 of the Constitution is there. You cannot prosecute a sitting vice president. They have immunity clause oh. in the Constitution. Section 308. Ditto, you can't prosecute a governor or a sitting governor. So why should we exempt a president who should lead by example by attending the general store in Gogolada? Or are you saying, sir, that the president has two heads? Well, I have one. He's supposed to serve me, not me serving him. If we are truly in a democracy, the voice of the majority should be respected. Even the proponent of that bill, the way it is couched, it is the ordinary civil servant who will continue to go to the hospitals locally. If you are on level 12, level 13, 14, and you know the commissioner, of course you are already going abroad at taxpayer's expense. Even the commissioner's driver will go on taxpayer's expense. So the exception clause introduced is to create a leeway for whoever is the commissioner for health or minister for health to continue with Nigerianism in everything we do. If we are talking about Nigeria today, you have to talk of who no man in our local palace. Who do you know? That is what that exception clause is. Or oh, you talk of medical board. What medical board? Made up of people from the sky. They are make up all these made up of people in Nigeria who are Nigerians. Like my brother and the Islamic scholar said just now, you will find that most of the people you are going to consult abroad are Nigerians. I remember when I had my own medical issues and I went to Chelsea International Hospital and I saw a, a young Nigerian doctor. Who was to check me? And the way I looked at him, I said, You are in Nigeria. He said, Yes. Hmm. I smiled. If I go to the United States, all at my expense, because I've never worked for government for one day, I be on the payroll of a government. So, only when I see Nigerians, they excel. Why are they excelling? Why they do so well? They leave Nigeria to go to where you have better facilities. And why are you leaving Nigeria to go to England? Because there are better facilities there. Why put in a recession clause? A leeway for those who you know to be able to travel. In fact, there is no need for that bill. Okay. Let's look at it again where we have this aspect of uh, the fine, uh, which uh, is prescribing a seven-year jail term or 500 million naira or both. Uh, what do you think of this, uh, Malam Nurudin? <laughs> you know, that again sounds infantile. Uh, it underscores, in my opinion, the lack of seriousness about the entire amendment, whatever bill that has been introduced, assuming it sees the light of the day. Now, who is going to pay the fine? Let us not pretend about this. What that, the act that is presently in existence that is intended to be amended, Ended, yeah. what was the overall objective? 
The overall objective was for us to deepen our earth sector. Have we achieved that? What is the percentage of those who even travel outside at the expense of taxpayers' money? Last year alone, close to, if not more, than a billion U.S. dollars went in the name of medical tourism. You know what that could possibly do in this country? Whether you work for government or you source the money yourself and traveled outside, that is a serious hemorrhage that has implication for the economy. If we strengthen the facilities, retain as it were, the brains that we are losing to the outside world, people would come because the overall objective was that let us, even if it was just to capture Africa alone. Egypt is there taking heavy chunk of the billions of dollars that go into medical tourism. If we had deep in, and South Africa of late is equally getting its own share. If we had deep in, if we had worked in spirit and letter of the 2014 um, uh, National Act. Health Act, whatever, uh, yeah. whatever, we would just be home and dry. But you know what is good about us is that we regale, we find God to, so to speak, in dissipation of resources, engage in every. It's just like you link it to the fact that, oh, we can't get fuel. You know, I had complained to you, how do I come here when I have to source of fuel? Oh, we need to clean the fuel system with X billion. What we had was that fuel was brought into this country that was bad. Oh, we subsidized fuel with X trillion. And you ask, how much is it to fix a refinery? Why would we in the very first place be importing what we should have capacity to, whatever? So, what should concern us? Is it the judge, 19% plus of our judges do not assess medical facility locally? Is it the judge who had gone, who probably, of course, will get a minister to approve or a commissioner if it's a state affair to go? Is it the judge who will sit in judgment over someone whom they probably met over there and exchanged pleasantries? To say, hey, you should not have gone. Yes, the art gives me the moral platform to do so. I mean, gives me the, the legal, legal platform to do so. But where is the morality? Am I a moral cripple that I will be sentencing you for assessing medical treatment overseas when I knew I was there before you, I was there after you? Because I probably got clearance from a minister you didn't have access to. So these are issues that would challenge. What should have been of interest is to say we have passed a, a bill okay. that was assented to by Mr. President. Why is it that the earth situation is still in the mess that it is? Because the 2014 act we are talking about preceded the corona issue. The corona issue brought to fore how decimal we had failed in the realization of what were the anticipated benefit for which that act uh, was uh, passed. Okay. In case you're just joining us, as Law and you and I have been speaking with Malam Nuruddin Asunogye, who is an Islamic scholar and, of course, a legal practitioner, and also with A.B. Thomas, an articulate legal practitioner. And uh, on the program, I'm the host, Philip Omao uh, quickly, as we uh, tail to round off, uh, let's look at the aspect of the fine and the jail term. At what point can um, both be applied to the offender, Thomas? Well, if we are talking about law and not Nigerians, the law is that when an offender is brought before the court and, and due process is followed, we say due process. The prosecution produces their witnesses to prove that that offender has breached a particular law. And the law prescribes a punishment. Yeah. Because breaching a law is not in itself an offense. Oh. Unless you have a prescribed punishment. Okay. That's when it becomes a law. That is why. Initially, they were talking of medical tourism. He 
his abroad. Yes. But they didn't say this is the punishment. Now you have now come with a punishment of 500 million, which is laughable. Who in Nigeria is going to pay a fine of 500 million? So <laughs> you prosecute the man. The man is given equal opportunity to defend himself as to whether he embarked on medical tourism or he did not. Then the judge, who himself must not have been guilty of the same offense, should preside over such a trial. <laughs> <laughs> should preside over such a trial. It is then the judge will have the legal and the moral justification. To be able to preside over such a suspect, then, if at the end, in the opinion of the judge, the prosecution has been able to prove that the suspect has committed the offence of going on medical tourism, it is then the judge will apply either of these three. Okay. One, a sentence of the number of years prescribed alone. Or he may not prescribe that number of years, but prescribe the amount as fine, which is 500 million in the case of this proposed bill. And in many Nigerian legislations, there's a third option. I would say both the imprisonment okay. and the fine. The fine. So you look at it. You jail a man for seven years for going to treat himself because you, the government that appoint the judges, cannot even provide the medical facilities at home in the first case. I'm saying, assuming the law is passed. You jail the man seven years and you ask the man to pay a fine of 500 million. It means by the time he comes out after three and a half years or so, <laughs> he will have no house to stay, he becomes a destitute. It becomes more dangerous to the society than the law which you are supposed to use to improve our medical facilities in Nigeria. Okay. So these are the options available. Okay. But you will find that in the normal Nigeria setting, it will never happen that that bill will see light of day. Let me let me digress a bit. You may not know this, but I will tell you. Between 1994 and 1998, when Abacha held sway, because of the sanctions from Commonwealth countries, he could not access medical facilities in UK and other Commonwealth countries. What did he do? He got Philips, he got Philips okay. International, and other medical producers to install the now what you now know as state house clinic that can no longer prescribe that can no longer have panadol now okay okay he got state house established okay state house clinic okay why can't the money like i called it all, i told my brother here about one billion dollars last year you can imagine how many teaching hospitals or even refurbishing existing teaching hospitals Okay. No, we have. Okay. Let me take your uh, uh, line in that regard as we round well, off. You see, because the, the fact I also of the want matter, you to the, talk the, about the aspect of how it would have been applied uh, in, uh, for the act where there were no sanctions. You see, you see, the, the fact of the matter is that every law that is not intended to be practicable is dead ab initio, mm. and this is what this law is: is dead even on arrival dead on arrival. Why do I say so? Who is the person that you are going to charge for going for medical tourism? Because you can't even assess government resources to do so if you are a public servant, if you do not get an approval of the body okay. that is the uh, approving body. Okay. I said, oh, is it the ordinary man who goes because he couldn't get facility that you are going to send to jail? So there are so many things that are nebulous about this bill. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I think uh, as time will uh, give us the uh, opportunity to do more on this, on further editions, we'll explain for more clarity.
Well, that's much you can take on law and you. Big thanks, uh, Malam Nuruddin Sunoge, and big Thank thanks, uh, A.B. Thomas, for taking our time to be part of this edition. I'm your host, Philip Omo Gupon. We'll do this on the next one. Goodbye.